Hi guys, today we're going to talk about Le Chatelier's principle and then the effect temperature, pressure uh, and concentration have on equilibrium position in closed systems. Okay, so here's kind of a formal definition of Le Chatelier's principle. If a constraint is imposed on a system at equilibrium, then the system will respond in such a way as to counteract the effect of that constraint. So for example, you could change the temperature, the pressure, the concentration, or you could introduce a catalyst. Now, if you try and increase the temperature, the equilibrium position will move to try and reduce the temperature. If you reduce the temperature, the equilibrium position will move to try and increase the temperature. If you increase the concentration uh, of, of one of the uh, uh, chemicals, the concentration will try and the equilibrium position, sorry, will try and move to try and decrease that concentration. But if you try and remove something, so you try and decrease the concentration, then the concentration will shift. The equilibrium position will shift to try and increase the amount of stuff that you've just removed. Uh, if you increase the pressure uh, on the uh, chemical system, the, the, the equilibrium position will move to try and reduce the pressure. But oppositely, if you try and reduce the pressure, the equilibrium position will move to try and increase it. Now, I've put catalyst here, but catalyst does not affect the equilibrium position at all. So that's very important. This is probably the only time I'm going to talk about catalysts in this video, because there's no effect on the equilibrium position. They only get the chemical reaction to go to the equilibrium position faster. They are not in, they cannot change the, the position of the equilibrium. So let's just have a look at temperature in more detail. Now here I've got two different types of reaction. I've got an exothermic reaction. So moving this way will uh, release heat. Whereas an endothermic reaction, moving this way, will remove heat from the system. Now in an exothermic reaction, if I increase the temperature, the system's got to try and work to oppose that change. So if I increase the temperature, then what will happen is the equilibrium position will shift towards the left. So if I increase the temperature, the, it, because if I go in this direction, more, tem more heat is released, the equilibrium position will move towards A and B to re reduce the amount of heat in the system. But an endothermic system, if I increase the temperature, and then remember, an endothermic system, it, it wants energy to move uh, from the left to the right. If I increase the uh, temperature of an endothermic system, the systems, the equilibrium position will move towards C and D uh, and away from A and B. But if I reduce the temperature, the equilibrium position will actually move towards A and B. So if I start taking energy out of the system, the equilibrium position will move towards A and B. Okay, next up, let's talk about pressure. Now, pressure, uh, I've drawn this little uh, uh, kind of box here, and I've just invented a chemical equation. So we've got three lots of A, and two B goes to C, and then this is a uh, two-way reaction. It's a, a reversible reaction. It can go this way or this way. The system's been set up in equilibrium, and then we're going to talk about, well, how can the equilibrium position shift? Now, Looking just at this side, I've got 3A and 2B, so I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different molecules, whereas C here is just by itself. Now every time one of these molecules hits against the wall, it exerts a pressure. So if I increase the pressure on this box, my equilibrium position is going to move more towards C. And the reason why, if I've just got C there, I've just got one molecule, only that is going to hit the sides of the container as opposed to these five. So if I do the reverse, if I reduce the pressure, well Le Chatelier's principle says the system will try and oppose my change. So if I reduce the pressure, the system's going to move towards the left. So I'd end up having more of these over here. Okay, finally, let's talk about concentration. Now here I've just got a very simple uh, chemical equation. A plus B goes to C and D, and it's a reversible reaction. Now, if I increase the concentration of A, the system will move the equilibrium position to try and oppose that change. So if I increased A or increased B, 
the equilibrium position would move towards C and D. If I removed A, or if I removed B, I've reduced the concentration, the system will try and oppose that change, so they'd actually end up moving toward, the equilibrium position would move towards here. Likewise with C, if I reduced C, or if I reduced D, the equilibrium position would shift over here to try and change that, to try and increase the concentration of C or D. If I increase the concentration of C or D, the system would try and oppose it again, and the equilibrium position would move towards A or B. So let's try and apply some of this knowledge to some problems. Okay, consider the following exothermic reaction. So that's important, it's exothermic moving in this direction. State with a reason what would happen to the amount of chlorine and hydrogen chloride in the system if the following changes were made after equilibrium had been established in a sealed container. Okay, if you removed water from the system, so if you remo removed water, the system is going to try and increase the concentration of water. So the equilibrium position would move over towards the right. Okay, so the equilibrium position would move over towards the right. But what would happen to the amount of chlorine and hydrogen chloride? Okay, so if it's moving towards the right, the amount of chlorine would increase, the amount of, the amount of hydrochloric acid would decrease. So, uh, so water is removed, uh, Cl2 would increase, HCl, the amount of HCl would decrease. If they add extra oxygen to the system, so if there's extra oxygen, again, the equilibrium position will shift towards the right. So the amount of hydrochloric acid will decrease. The amount of chlorine will again increase. So extra oxygen added. Cl2 is going to increase again. HCl is going to decrease. The volume of the container was reduced. So if the volume of the container was reduced, the pressure is going to go down. Now, on the left-hand side, I've got 4 HCl plus O2, so I've got 5 molecules here. And I've got 2 Cl and 2 H2O, so I've got 4 molecules on the right. Now, by reducing the volume of the container, uh, the pressure is going to increase. So, if the pressure increases, we're actually going to move towards the towards the right because there's only four molecules on this side as opposed to five molecules over here. So if the volume of the container is reduced, pressure will increase. We're going to end up with an increase in, uh, in chlorine and HCl is going to decrease. If the temperature of the container was increased, well, we know it's an exothermic reaction going from the left to the right. So that means heat is being given, given out if it's going to the right. Well, if we are increasing the temperature even more, the system's going to try and oppose it, and the system will actually, the equilibrium position will move more towards uh, the uh, uh, hydrogen chloride and the oxygen. So, if the temperature of the container was increased, then we're going to get uh, less uh, chlorine, and we're going to get more... Uh, hydrogen chloride. And finally, a catalyst was added. Well, that will have no effect. It would just reach the equilibrium position faster. For each of the following reactions, state and explain whether a high or low temperature and a high or low pressure should be used to maximize the yield of the product. So firstly, A, we've got 2SO2 plus O2 goes to 2SO3. And the uh, reaction is uh, delta H is negative. So that means it's exothermic. So if we want lots of the product, okay, we want the equilibrium position to shift to the right. Now if it's uh, exothermic, we want a low temperature. So, low temperature. Okay. Now, how many molecules have we got on the left-hand side? We've got one, two, three.
three. So we've got three molecules here, but we've only got two on the right. So if we increase the pressure, the system's going to try and oppose it, reduce the number of molecules, uh, to, so there's less pressure exerted on the container. So we want a high pressure. So that's what I think we're going to do to maximize the yield of the product. Low temperature, high pressure. Of course, it can't be so low, the temperature, that the rate of reaction is slowed down. So that obviously there'll be a compromise between the two. But we want a relatively low temperature uh, and a high pressure. Okay, part B. We've got PCL5 goes to PCL3 plus, plus Cl2. And that equation is uh, delta H positive, so it's endothermic. So let me write endothermic. Now, because it's an endothermic reaction, we're going to want to increase the temperature because we want more product. We want to shift the equilibrium position to the right. So a high temperature uh, would be better. Okay, then let's have a look about the pressure though. Now here we've only got one molecule on the, on the left. On the right we've actually got two. So we've got one here and one here. So a low pressure would be better. And that will also shift the equilibrium position towards the right. Okay, you need to see, we've got hydrogen and iodine goes to two hydrogen iodide. And the equation is uh, uh, delta H negative. So it's uh, exothermic. Now, because it's exothermic and we want to shift the equilibrium position towards the right, and we're going to have a low uh, temperature. But if you look at the number of molecules, we've got two on this side. We've actually got two on this side. So the pressure, it's not going to make that much of a difference. So uh, pressure, it won't contribute to moving the equilibrium position. The equilibrium position. Okay, last one, D. Now this time, our chemical reaction is neither exothermic nor endothermic, so temperature is not going to move the uh, equilibrium position. And also, if you look at how many molecules have you got on the left, well, you've got uh, two on the left, and how many have you got on the right? We've also got two. So pressure is not going to move the equilibrium position either. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe.